hello, hello, and thank you so much for joining me for another uh, MD Minute on my channel, JSC Lee MD. I'm your host, Jonathan Jaha Lee, a child and adolescent psychiatrist. I had originally filmed this uh, short inside the terminal, but was advised that it was incredibly noisy. Um, and so here we are. So in the series, MD Minutes, um, I share some of the kind of common counseling that I'll give uh, for people that I see in day-to-day -day life. And as you can see, I am en route to Toronto, the faraway land of Canada where I hail from, um, and I'm really excited by it. A uh, little bit of self-disclosure here. I, uh, I really struggle with aerophobia or flight anxiety, and I'm not sure um, if any of you might, but today I'm hoping to just really give some tips and tricks that might help mollify that kind of pre-boarding um, jitters that some of us experience. One of the first things um, I experienced when I was in residency was that I shared my fear of flying uh, with a supervisor um, and he promptly said, have you tried Xanax? Ouch. Um, and while benzodiazepines are a great short-term band-aid solution, um, generally speaking, I tend to avoid prescribing them even for you know presentations or flights um, because they tend to have that kind of psychological dependence formation, even more so than uh, the neurochemical, whereby people superstitiously learn that as long as they have the Xanax bottle in their purse, they're okay. And that's great. It sort of wards off evil spirits and anxiety. But what happens if you're pulling up to the security check-in and um, you realize you left that at home? Well, in this kind of situation, I think it's helpful to um, remind ourselves that there are a lot of things that we can do even to the exclusion of having a prescription, one of which is distraction. I mean, uh, in a noisy terminal, as you're waiting to take off, um, as you're being uh, shuttled to 30,000 feet in the air, there are a lot of noises and senses that might be on overload, overdrive. Um, this is a great time to pop in those headphones, listen to your favorite India Ari or Beyonce, um, or cue up your, your favorite K-drama, I mean, business proposal, amazing, um, extraordinary attorney woo, you know, anything that you can think of to kind of defray that anxiety or put your attention on something else. Um, now, for those of you who are looking for a more literal or concrete kind of intervention, another great option is to manage your temperature. Um, so cold temperature in the setting of anxiety or angst can be very helpful in quelling and mollifying some of the symptoms that we have. Um, going to the bathroom, uh, splashing cold water on your face, washing your hands in cold water, or going to your local concession stand next to your gate um, to pick up a nice cold uh, water or other kind of drink. And holding that icy um, bottle to your face or to your neck or your shoulders, um, that can really start to cue up that parasympathetic or vasovagal response, the rest and digest aspect of your nervous system. That is sort of the um, mirror image of the fight or flight nervous system that is engaged when we're getting kind of angsty. Um, for many of us who experience flight anxiety, turbulence can be a really uh, brutal injunction over any flight. I remember so many times as a teen uh, flying over um, the Pacific, you know, to Asia um, and watching my favorite Marvel movie, Simu Liu, Shang-Chi, anyone, uh, and gripping the seat in terror as we started to, to jostle. Um, in this instance, um, I found it helpful, and maybe you will, or maybe you'll find it invalidating, I don't know, to remind myself that, that turbulence is like, turbulence is like the airplane sweating, or like the airplane just like, you know, doing what it does. It's like it's breathing. Um, it's not dangerous, you know, there's, yeah, electrostatic kinds of forces, etc. that are beyond your control. Um, but sometimes that little bit of knowledge and a reassuring flight attendant's face and voice uh, can do wonders. The other piece is if you're strapped into your seat um, and the seatbelt sign is on, uh, meaning you can't go to the bathroom to run cold water on your face, some of the things that you can do would be to really um, take those deep diaphragmatic breaths and ultimately um, relax those muscles as you inhale, squeezing those muscles, as you exhale, relaxing down um, and settling back in to your favorite Marvel or Disney um, thing. 
for those of you who are well acquainted with dialectical behavior therapy skills or distress tolerance techniques, uh, one of the skills, the M in, in the improved skill, is that of meaning. Searching for the why or the purpose or the principle behind the present suffering or distress um, and making it work for you. And so for me, a lot of this comes down to, you know, visualizing the beloved family members that I'm going to see um, in my mind's eye, you know, focusing on how I'm getting an opportunity to practice my emotion regulation and distress tolerance skills and to grow, um, you know, as a human person. Um, and also just learning that it is possible to experience pain um, and distress and to weather it um, and to go on with life. So although this has been a smattering, you know, there's, there's infinite number of additional tips and tricks um, that you can employ. This is just a, a you know, select menu of the Try, Tested and True that I've recommended to people that I see in my practice and of course that I've employed um, on my own. So as my boarding time is quickly approaching, um, I'm probably going to go do some mental imagery and uh, deep breathing of my own. So until next time, uh, be well and love yourself.